Well, y'all shout one more time before you sit down. Wow. Now, listen. Listen, um, I want to say something before I even get started and let you sit down. That I am not responsible for anything that's going to happen in the next two days. I know it's already been going on, but I've been locked in the house. This is the first time I've been out of Texarkana preaching. Now, I've been doing plenty of preaching in it, but this is the first time I've been out, and I'm back at the house, too. I'm back in here with family. So listen, y'all show out on another level here every year. Miracle signs and wonders happen in here every year. And I want you to make this year an exception, which means you're going to do like David. You're going to be just a little less dignified. After all the devil been trying to do, y'all didn't hear what I said. I said after all the devil has been trying to do in the earth and in your life in this nation and point blank period it is time to find a group of church people and I believe you in the house tonight that's ready to fight back ready to fight back. Glory to God. So now, I just want you to look at somebody down your row and tell them if you ain't going to fight, get off the road. Get off the road. If you ain't going to fight, just move. Just move. Just buy. Get some. Go ahead and put them out your room. If they ain't going to fight, get out the room. Get out my bedroom, get out the study, get out the kitchen, get out your car. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm so honored to be here. I want to say one more thing and then we're going to be seated and take the offering because we have to honor. You know, I, I always have to say this, you know, I nicknamed him the Godfather because I believe he can still make you an offer. <laughs> If, if, if he went too far in the flesh, I believe he could still make you an offer you couldn't refuse. But no, I fell in love. Literally, you know how your spirits just grab hold of certain people? The moment I met him in Nashville, Tennessee, my, I mean, our spirits just connected. And I fell in love with you and your wife. And I'm telling you, we love, do we love? We love y'all so much. We talk about y'all constantly. My wife is grieved because she was trying to surprise you and she couldn't get it done. And um, I mean, just our hearts and to see the walk of faith to see the boldness and the strength of the Lord bring you through everything and then you lead the charge in the body of Christ and we just love you we just honor you and then to all of the privets look man I'm a little darker this year if y'all can't tell because the only thing I've been able to do is play some golf so I've been out in the heat frying like a piece of Popeye's chicken in Texas and so you don't want no part of me now <laughs> but but I love Phil Jr. let's give them a hand Jerry and Brittany you going to work before I leave and then to Gil and Debbie just everybody this is family y'all so let me let me love on my family for a minute 
And all of the workers around here, you know who you are from the hospitality. You have excellence to your parking lot people, just everybody. I just want you to know how much Janet and I feel at home here. And this is going to be an amazing time. I got some stuff to talk to you about. And, and, but, but more than anything, I came to pick a fight. <laughs> I mean that. We're going into some spiritual warfare in the next couple of days. You may be seated, but you can't fight with all that money in your pocket. So we got we to gotta lighten the load a little bit. Hey, man, I don't want to weigh you down. Go to, go to Matthew chapter number 6. All of those that are watching online, listen. You are adding your supply. Even though you're not here physically, thank God for this technology. It's able to reach into your home. I want you praying. I want you giving. I want you decreeing. Because today, I mean, tonight we're going to start something probably that's already been started. Even though I hadn't been able to watch any of the services yet from today, I already know I'm going to jump in a vein. And so um, it's already started, but I want you to continue to press in. Matthew chapter number six. This, this is something that has been in my spirit and I have been challenging the saints of God um, back home about Matthew six, starting with verse number 24. No one can serve two masters for he will either hate the one and love the other or else be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot. He said you cannot. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now, there's a whole lot of, you know, revelations and definitions about mammon. I don't want to go into all of them tonight as much as to say we're literally just talking about, when you break it all down, two systems of provision. And, and that's the bottom line. To, and one of those systems of provision is governed by Satan. Satan has an economy. I want you to say that after me. Satan has an economy. Now, what does that mean? That means he controls an economy. Now, we know that's true because he told Jesus, he says, all the kingdoms of this world and their wealth will I give to you if you will bow down and worship me, which means there is a system in this earth in which Satan controls and manipulates the distribution of provision and resources to people who will carry out his plan and strategies. Uh, everybody getting rich didn't get rich by God. Everybody, ble everybody that think they're blessed are not blessed by God. There is the hand of the enemy that's working in all of this. And what Jesus is trying to do is deliver his disciples from that. To make sure they don't get caught up in it, trusting it for provision. And so this is the whole thing he's doing is he's detoxing all the way down through Matthew chapter number six. He's detoxing the saints of God from religious ways of doing things. And then he, he begins to bring them to the crescendo of the end of this, this chapter by teaching them about provision. And he says there are two masters that are going to ultimately govern this realm. There is God and there is mammon, which is a demonic spirit. And like I said, it's basically a system of demonic arrangement on the earth that deals with provision. Now he says, he says you can't serve them both. Now, if we have not been taught anything in the last few months, it is that this system can collapse just like that. Just like that. But it ain't all collapsing. <laughs> I can promise you that. 
because the devil got it where he wanted. But it's a system in which Satan controls. And if your trust is in that system, it is an unstable system and it's governed by a spirit that really ain't intending on getting you none of it. And one of the main reasons Christian people struggle is because they brought their lives into the kingdom, but they left their wallets out of it. And they constantly, in other words, what I'm saying is you can do some things and not totally detach from that system. And so what's happening financially and what is going to be happening financially, because Satan is wicked. Man, I, I'm telling you, we're going we gonna to beat the devil up so bad. We're we going to deal with him. We got to deal with him, y'all. We got to deal with demonic spirits and, and principalities and powers. We just got to deal with it. You know, mainly in these camp meetings and things like this, you know, we're jumping and we're fighting and we're dancing. And, but, but no, 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 this time I came to make you mad. You got to get mad. You got to, before I leave here Friday night, you're going to be mad. You're going to be mad because you got to be ready to fight. You got to be ready to take back from what the enemy is trying to do in your life. And so now, I want to ask you a question. This system can be shut down. It can be, it can fail you from a provisionary standpoint, can it? Yeah, it can do it. By the millions, millions people have lost jobs. Provision, you say, well, I still got mine. <laughs> but, but I'm telling you, all around this globe, all around this globe. But now let me ask you another question. Is God in a pandemic? <laughs> Did, is any of this affect God at all? So everything that's happening in the kingdom shouldn't be affected by it. You missed a good time to shout. And you say, but yeah, Pastor, I know people in the kingdom and they lost this and they lost this and they lost this and they lost that. Let me tell you something. Your faith can't stand in what happens to people. Your faith has got to stand in what God said in his word. And look what he said in his word. He said, don't even start worrying about what you're going to eat and what you're going to drink. Know your body what you're going to put on it. He said, don't even worry about that. Now, I'm paraphrasing because, you know, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying not to preach now. And so he says, look at the birds. For they neither sow nor reap. They don't work. They're not out there 40 hours a week doing nothing. They don't get a check on Friday. None of that. And then he says, look at the birds. They not get, they're not sowing, they're not reaping. But look, your heavenly father feeds them. <laughs> Which means all a bird does is get up in the morning and say, there's a worm somewhere. Yes, <laughs> I ain't going to even worry about it. We didn't store it up last night. Ain't nothing in the deep freeze. Ain't nothing in the refrigerator. Don't even know we're going to eat tomorrow. All we know is there's a worm somewhere. Well, Y'all didn't hear what I'm saying. Uh, because when your father feeds you, you don't know. The Bible says that God led the children of Israel by the way of the wilderness. One of the reasons was to cause them to know that, bread, that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And when they didn't have no food, remember God rained down manna. They looked at it and said, what is this? In other words, 
God gave them bread baked fresh from heaven that nobody had ever eaten before. And when they picked it up, God said, that's what I've been trying to show y'all. I've been trying to show y'all that I can provide for you in ways that you have never seen before. In other words, God can make provision show up anywhere. Why? Because he controls. He controls what I call kingdom economy, which means everything under his authority, he can make it work for your good. He can make it provide for you. He can make it happen for you. But you got to trust in that system. You got to trust it. So now watch this. He says, look at the, look at the, look at, um, the lilies. He say they don't grow, they don't, they don't talk, they don't work, they don't spin. And even Solomon in all of his glory wasn't clothed like one of these. Now if God took care of the bird and took care of the grass, he said, well, why are you tripping? <laughs> Let me tell you why people tripping and why they worry. Because they're not in his system. Because they're not connected to his economy. Because they are tied to the systems of this world when it comes to provision. Now listen, his name ain't Job Jira. His name is Jehovah Jireh. Come on, say it. What is it? Jehovah Jireh. Which means you could be watching me and you've lost your job, but you have not lost your God. And as long as you got your God, he is going to provide for you if you trust him. So now, no doubt, there are people in this room and people watching me during all of these seasons that you're starting to doubt God's provision. I came to put an end to that tonight because this ain't the time to doubt. This is the time to prove. This is a time to prove. This is a time to go all in. This is the time to, why? You can't trust that other system nowhere. You can't trust that other system anyway. This is the time to go in. If anything, some of you have had a crutch removed. That's been hindering your faith. And the uncertainty has got you worried, but I came to tell you, if God so clothes the grass of the field and the birds of the air, he is going to take care of his children. Can I get a witness in this room? It doesn't matter what happens in this earth if you're in the right system economically now so what does that mean real clear that means that you trust the government of god <laughs> this government ain't the only one give bailouts Boy, y'all that boy, y'all that y'all ain't ready for me. Y'all y'all ain't ready. You ain't ready. You ain't ready. I'm telling you, God can do something before tomorrow night in your life that can wipe out every need you ever had. But those that have been backing up, those that have been getting fearful, those that have stopped giving, those that have quit tithing, tonight is your night to recalibrate your faith 
get it back on the word of God and say, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I'm trusting you. And I'm going to tithe if I got to go to my closet and get some clothes. I'm going to tithe. I'm going to keep working. I'm going to keep giving. This ain't the time to get tight. This is the time to start giving. And if you don't have money, you got some. Somebody say something. You got, you got some in your life. Man, I feel like I'm talking to people. You, you, this is not the time to back up. This is the time to prove God. And listen, y'all, this is not about an offering. You know your pastors, this is uh, God will provide. This is not about an offering. We know there's budgets and things to me, and they're going to be met. But this is about your life. This is about God wanting to be good to his children so that when the world is going down, and they ask you, how in the world y'all getting blessed in the middle of that? You tell them because I'm connected to another system. Oh, my God. Let me tell you something. Oh, I got so much in me. I got so much. See, 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 some of you started out real good in 2020, didn't you? Yeah, you started out. You started out with all them prophecies and, and you know, and, and everything that was going to happen and what the Lord told you and, oh, 2020 is going to be it. 2020 is going to be it. 2020 and 2020. Let me ask you something. When did God change his mind? Y'all didn't hear what I said. When did God change his mind? He didn't change his mind. You changed yours. But today I got to get you back in your right mind and start believing God again. Got to start believing God again. Go get your provision. Tell that devil, turn loose of every dime belongs to me. I'm going to come out of this year more blessed, running over, overflowing. I'm going to come out pressed down, shaking together. I'm going to come out with more favor, more provision, more business, more opportunity. Oh, my God. Oh, somebody shout if you believe it with me. You got to believe God. So now, so your God lacks nothing. He, hadn't, he doesn't move by the systems of the world. He's outside of that. And all of those things that you've been shrinking about, your faith is about to be restored. That's why I've been talking for the last few minutes to just build your faith, to build your faith. Now let's obey God. And we're going to give, and right in the middle of all of this, this is going to be the most blessed camp meeting we've ever had. <laughs> right in the middle of it to show that God is true to his word. Father, this is not the time to doubt. This is the time to prove, to prove your word. If we seek first the kingdom, we're looking to you. We're not looking to the world and these systems. And even though you provided for some of us jobs, and, but because of the things that have happened in the earth, because of the attacks of the enemy, he has tried to make us doubt that you're going to come through for us in every way possible. But Satan is a liar. You are Jehovah Jireh and nothing can stop you. Nothing can hinder you. We have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor its seed begging for bread. Oh, and Father, we trust you right now. We don't serve mammon. We serve Jehovah Jireh. And Father, we receive every need met, every bill paid. We receive running over for this camp meeting. Oh, God, we thank you. And we release angels to the north, south, the east, and the west to come the favor, the money, the open doors, the opportunity, the business to come that we might see your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now somebody shout amen if you believe it. Well, amen, amen, amen. You may be seated. Grab your Bibles. We got work to do. Now, 
there's a glare back there so I can't see that clock and that is a dangerous thing. I don't know what y'all have done in here, but whatever you changed has put a glare on that clock on the back wall. I've been able to see it every year, but I can't see it for some reason. <laughs> but but we we going to dive in. Now listen, tonight I've, I've been doing something here uh, for the last few months, and... I really felt the Spirit of the Lord told me to start here and, and deal with spiritual warfare. And, um, and we're going to culminate tomorrow night with an actual revelation of spiritual warfare and how to do war in the Spirit because... What we've been dealing with in the earth and in our lives, those things that have been affecting us are all spiritual. And the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they're mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds. And there's some things I'm seeing in the earth because I'm only 51 years young. And some of you who have been in ministry longer than me, almost 30 years of ministry for me, those that have been older than me and seen the moves of God in this nation and in the earth, without being too critical, we have to come to the realization that something has happened to the body of Christ. And, and that's the reality of it. Something has happened to the church, to the believers and, and we're in a position now where if we don't learn how to walk in faith, if we don't learn how to fight, if we don't learn how to stand our ground, if we don't learn how to believe God, if we, if we, if we don't learn how to push back against the forces of the enemy, I'm afraid that in a generation where we should be reaching our finest hour, we're going to be dealing with the weakest church body that we've ever seen in the earth. And the reason that's important is because we won't be able to push back the spirits of darkness. Satan has picked a fight with us. He's picked a fight with the church. And what we're seeing is not a company of believers that really know how to fight back. We see believers running. But what we want to do is raise up some Davids that say, who, who, who out there and what he's saying? <laughs> we, we're going to have to push back against the darkness. And the thing that has been missing in even the ages that I've come through and I know a uh, pastor can talk more about it, being in the ministry years um, more than me and other ministers here. You can sense that the body of Christ and the strength of it is not pushing back against the forces of darkness. Now, it wouldn't be that way collectively, and we wouldn't be sensing that if it wasn't that way individually. Because we're only strong as strong collectively as a body of Christ as the individuals in it. And so now, normally in these meetings, we're talking tenets of faith and righteousness and all of those things, but my assignment for the next two days is to unpack spiritual warfare in a dimension so that you can see what's happening in your life, what's happening in the earth, because you can't just be caught up in your life because we're the light of the world and the salt of the earth. And so the kingdom has an assignment. If you're in the kingdom, we have an assignment. It can't just be about you and your two. 
you know, it's got, to, it's got to get out of your house and into the earth and impact cities and nations. And so I'm going to give you a bigger picture tonight. And then I'm going to deal more individually with you tomorrow night. And we're going to start to see everything in your life and in this nation and in the earth pushed back. Do I have any faith in here? Do I have some agreement? So now go to Daniel chapter number 9. I had my administrator send over a, a uh, not a PowerPoint, but just a picture. And I want to know, did you, were you all able to get that? Okay, when I tell you to put that up, that, yes, that is great. Actually, you can, you can leave that up. And that way you won't have to put it up. Um, but I want you to go to Daniel chapter 9. Is there any way you can split those screens? And yeah, look at there. I knew you could do it. Daniel chapter number 9. So just, just bear with me as I set something up for us tonight. As I've been preaching this message in parts of it, this has been one of the most impactful things that has happened over the last few months as far as impacting people tied to our ministry and people from around the world have been writing me about this particular revelation and message. Daniel chapter number nine, it's Daniel getting a prophecy from Gabriel, or basically a revelation of a prophecy brought to him by Gabriel about the dealing of God with the children of Israel and Jerusalem in particular for that moment and that prophetic revelation went all the way to the end of the age, which is amazing that God would deal with him about things that were happening then and things that will be happening hundreds of years and even thousands of years into the future. Whew, boy, isn't that amazing? That's why I sometimes I scratch my head when people say the angels showed up to them and I was like, what'd they do? What'd they say? Nothing. I just saw them. I don't know no angel in the Bible that showed up and didn't do nothing. <laughs> I mean, if an angel come in here, he ain't come and just show you how pretty he is. <laughs> Not to doubt nobody's angelic visitations. I'm just, I'm just saying, when they showed up in the Bible, they said something. <laughs> <laughs> they did something. They were, they were revealing something from heaven. And so he tells Daniel, he says, verse number 23 in Daniel 9, 23 says, At the beginning of your supplications, the command went out. Yeah, I like that. The word went out. And I have come to tell you, for you are greatly beloved. Therefore, consider the matter and understand the vision. Seventy weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city. Listen what these 70 weeks are about. To finish transgressions, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision and the prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and to build Jerusalem, to restore and to build Jerusalem, or actually rebuild Jerusalem, until the Messiah, the Prince, there will be seven weeks and 62 weeks. So he gives him some pinpoint accuracy. He says in this vision, he says, two things I want you to know about, and I'm going to tell you when they're going to happen. There's going to be a restoration of Jerusalem and the Messiah and the Prince is going to come. He says one of those things, the restoration of Jerusalem, he says is going to take seven weeks. And then he says, and then when the Messiah, the Prince comes, it's going to be 62 weeks. And so you see that in the word. So seven weeks, rebuilding of Jerusalem, 62 weeks, 
then the Messiah, the prince, is going to come, and the streets will be built again, and the wall, even in troublesome times. And after 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off. So now at the end of 62 weeks, he says, this Messiah who is going to come is going to be cut off. Which means he's literally going to suffer death. And then he goes on down and says, And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with a flood till the end of the war. Desolations are determined. Then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. But in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wings of an abomination shall, shall be one who makes desolate. Even until the consummation which is determined is poured out on the desolate. Wow, this is amazing. Now go to Matthew chapter number 24. Because Daniel sees in this vision, he sees 70 weeks. There's 70 prophetic weeks. I'll explain them in a minute. And we got this chart so that you can see this. And you can, you can just go online and Google this chart and get it so that you can have it. Because you're going to need to keep this chart because it's showing you everything that's happening in the earth right now. And so he says three things you need to pay attention to. He says a seven-week period where I'm going to rebuild. And then he says a 62-week period where the Messiah is going to come and be cut off. And then he says, and then there's another week where there's going to come someone coming on the scene who's going to bring total abomination and desolation. And then at the end of that week, that person is going to be consumed. <laughs> Glory be to God. So now, go over to Matthew 24, and the reason this is significant is because Jesus alluded to it. He says in verse number 4, Jesus answered and said, actually, let's read verse number 3, because the disciples were asking him, saying, tell us when will all these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus answered and said unto him, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation. Now, it's crucial that you understand the word nation right there is not just talking about geographical bounds. When we talk about nations, we have to see them in, in two ways. You have geographical boundaries in which you have a people populace, and we call that a nation or a nation of people. But it's the Greek word ethnos, which, where we get the word ethnic or ethnicity or racist from. And so he's literally saying what you're going to see is race fights. You're going to see ethnic groups against ethnic groups. You're going to start seeing nations, ethnos against ethnos. He says, he says, and there will, there will, let me see where we're at. There will be pestilence. There will be earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Ooh, underline that in your Bible or just remember it for the rest of your life. The beginning of sorrows because that word sorrows right there is the Greek word Odin, which means birth pains. It's labor, it's contractions or the pains that come with something being born. So he says, oh, when you sell these things, they're contractions. Mm. They're birth pains. Something's trying, to, something's trying to come forward. Something, something, something is trying to be born. <laughs> Woo! And before I get out of here Friday night, you're going to have your mind more on the baby than you do the contractions. Because something's about to be born here, y'all. And he says, these are the beginning of birth pains. In other words, something's about to be delivered. Then they will deliver you up 
to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended. And will betray one another and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Iniquity is another word for it. And then he says, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. Therefore, listen to this. When you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, Standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Stop right there. Let him understand. So he says, and when you see what the man Daniel saw come to rise in power, he says, make sure you understand what I'm trying to tell you. In other words, all of this is crescendoing towards something. God is on a time schedule. And his clock has been set. You and I don't know it. <laughs> we don't know it. But he knows it. But he left us things to look for. To know where he was and where he would be in the earth realm. And so now, oh, it gets gooder. Go to 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2, and then I'll be done with the reading of it. Oh, thank you, Lord. As, they can, as, as an old Baptist preacher used to say, I feel my help tonight. <laughs> Every preacher knows what it's like to have that thing right down on the inside of you. Listen at this, 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. I'm going to read all the way down to probably verse number 12, so just bear with me, and then we'll explain all this. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in your mind or troubled either by the spirit or by the word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed. Once again, there it is, the man of sin. Of sin. Daniel talked about a man coming. Jesus talked about a man coming. Paul talked about a man coming until the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. And then it says, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, that is worshiped so that he sits as in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things. And now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. You need to circle that again in your Bible, highlight it. Because he is not here. He's coming. He's coming in his own time. And he's telling them that that day hadn't come yet. And so now he goes on down and he says, two things are why that day has not come. Number one, he has his own time. And you know what is restraining. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Yeah, that's good enough. That's, that's good enough. Uh, some of y'all ain't read that much Bible in a couple of months. So I, I, I don't want to bore you with, with too much. 
<laughs> Too much Bible. Read. <laughs> the Bible says that the sons of Issachar had a discerning of the times to know what Israel ought to do. It amazes me that you and I find ourselves in moments like the world has never known and Jesus saw fit to have you on the earth when it happened. To think that you and I could have been born in any dispensation, in any generation, but there was something about the purpose of God for the earth that he held you back until the time of the manifestation of your purpose, his plan, and his will on the earth could be manifested through you. It is no accident that you are here now. It is no accident that I was born in this generation. I couldn't be born back in 1820. I couldn't be born back with Moses. I couldn't be born. I had to be on the earth for right now. And the bottom line is, is that you're on the earth to do something about it. Every one of us that have been born, especially if you are in the kingdom of God, we have an assignment. And our assignment is all about what Satan is trying to do in the earth. Now I'm going to try to speed through this quickly because like I said, tomorrow night we'll give a little more time to just deal with warfare. But I want you to get this foundation so that we can build this house. Daniel saw something in the revelation that the Lord told him, he said through the angel Gabriel, he says, I'm going to show you a 70 week period of things that are going to be happening in the earth and things that I've destined. And I want you to prophesy this, get this out. And it was so profound that Jesus was talking about it. What Daniel saw hundreds of years ago. And now Paul is talking about what Jesus saw, and now I'm talking tonight about what Paul saw. Which means he gave him a prophecy that is unending until the end of time. He gave him a scope all the way throughout the generations so that we can see what the kingdom of heaven would be up to until the end of the age. God, from the moment he put Adam on this planet, from the moment of redemption, had a time set in which he's going to wrap up the fullness of the redemption of the work of this earth. Shut it all down and start again with a new heaven and a new earth. And it's on a time schedule. But there's a purpose for which God wants completed before that time. This is why we've been in the last days for thousands of years. Amen. Haven't you ever wondered about that? People, we in the last days. Boy, these are the longest days we've ever seen. Do you know how long these days have been, these last days? They so long that Job prophesied about it. And said, it shall come to pass in the last days that God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And then it happened. It happened. It happened. And then on the day of Pentecost, this is that, which was spoken by the prophet Joel, that in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh and my sons and daughters shall prophesy. In the last days, perilous times shall come in. Shall, I mean, how long are these days going to last? I'm going to tell you how long they're going to last. They're going to last until the church finishes the assignment. We are not going to be caught up out of here, some weak, busted, and disgusted Christian people. We are leaving here with the assignment of a redemptive king finished in the earth. And we're going to be here until we're done which means the Father is waiting on the church to finish the work. What work? I'm glad you asked me. 
He shows Daniel this prophetic picture, and he says, in the reason it's prophetic, it's because he sees 70 weeks, but like a lot of prophetic things, they're figuratively or they're symbolic because he doesn't literally see 70 weeks. What he sees is 70 weeks of years. And so in order to understand this prophecy, what Daniel is seeing as 70 weeks are basically 70 seven-week periods, which are seven years. So everybody say this after me. One week, One week. is seven years. Okay, so for us a day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, Saturday, you know, um, that's a week for us. So for us, a week is one day. But in this prophetic vision that Daniel saw, a week, which is a day to us, was literally a week of years, which means every, every week was a seven-year period. And so it would be as if a day was a year. You got it? And so, and so when he told him in seven weeks, you're going to see the temple rebuilt. Well, it wasn't a seven-week period. It was a seven-week of years period. And so that's how you get it took 49 years from the moment God told him. 49 years later, the temple was rebuilt. Right on time. Seven times seven. And so these are week of years. And once you understand that, this is the reason why I wanted you to get this. is so that you can get the, revela the revelation of the figurative week of years so that you can understand it. So in 49 years, the temple was rebuilt. But then he told him, remember that something would happen in the period of 62 weeks. And so we're dealing with 62 week of years. And so we're dealing with 62 times 7, which is 434 years. And guess what happened in a 434 year period? Right at the right time, Jesus shows up on the scene. Born of a virgin. Wrapped in swaddling clothes. Daniel saw all of that. God showed him all of that. And right on God's prophetic timetable, in which Daniel saw these 62 weeks of years. Right there, it took 434 years for God to get the Messiah into the earth from the moment he showed Daniel he was coming. Daniel wasn't even alive to see it, but set the whole thing in motion with a word. Whew. And so he also says, though, but now at the, we at the end of these 62 weeks, he said the Messiah is going to be cut off. Is that the, is that the alarm telling me it's time to quit? <laughs> is, is that it? No. <laughs> y'all, some of y'all can't, y'all don't know what we're talking about, but those on the front row know what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so now, what happened at the end of 434 years, 31 A.D.? the crucifixion of Jesus. He came and was cut off. Right in line with Daniel's prophecy. So now, most of you don't have to have a degree in math to understand that when you put these years together and you put together everything that Daniel has seen, we have seen everything that he said would happen, happen right on time for these 70 weeks except the last week. We've had 69 weeks fulfilled. Remember, it's going to take 62 weeks for the Messiah to come and be cut off. That's already happened. It's going to take seven weeks for the temple to be revealed, uh, um, to be rebuilt in Jerusalem, restored. Took 49 years, and that's happened. But then this last thing over here, this last week in which he saw this person come to power that is going to bring total desolation on the earth and be worshipped as God himself and would make a covenant with Jerusalem in the middle of the week, break it. 
and then be worshipped as God and bring total lawlessness to the earth. That is the last week that has not manifested. So the question is, why hasn't the last week manifested? It is because between week 69 that Daniel saw and week 70, you see that gap right in the middle? It's called the church. <laughs> it's called the church. That when Jesus died, he gave birth to a people that would carry out an assignment in the earth before that last week. In other words, that last week can't come until we're done. That last week can't manifest until the church is finished. Which means there is something about you and I that the devil wants us out of the way. You want to know why? Because we were the answer to everything he would want to do in the earth at the end of the age. In other words, in between this gap, between week 69 and week 70, where the tribulation period is, is the church. And the church's job is to make sure that tribulation doesn't hit the earth before it's time. <laughs> oh, this is when it's going to get good right here. Because we know that last week, all hell is going to break loose. But it ain't supposed to be able to until we get out of here. So the question is, is if the tribulation ain't supposed to happen until we're gone, how in the world are we letting some of it happen while we're here? Amen. Because the church has not known our assignment. But the devil knows it. <laughs> and he's praying to God we don't find out about it. Because God has given authority to the church for an assignment. What is that assignment? What is this gap about? Why hadn't Jesus come? What is this holding up? Right there in 2 Thessalonians, it talks about, and I'm going to paraphrase because I read it to you. Go back and read it. It talked about how he had opened the letter to the Thessalonians saying, listen, I know you've heard people say that like the Lord has already come and the rapture of the church has already happened, but he said, no, it hadn't happened. And he says, so don't be deceived or troubled by that. He says, that time can't come. The catching away of the church. He says, or the tribulation period. He said, that time can't come unless there be first a great falling away and then the man of sin revealed. Now, he says, we know what is restraining that. Wow, this is good. This is good. This is good. Now we can start building the house. I laid the foundation. He says, now, now we know what's restraining that. Two things. Satan is going to have a time that has already been pre-established in which he is going to have his way in the earth. That's the tribulation period. It's the age of lawlessness. Won't be no having church in that age. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. That, that's going to be the age that when you say the name of Jesus, your head coming off. That's going to be the age of total lawlessness and iniquity, which is the Greek word lawlessness, where he's going to usher an age of everything that is anti-God. In that age, there will be no name of Jesus being trumpeted without instant death. He will have global control. All of that's in Revelations. We might get there. 
chapter number 13. All of those things, you're going to have it. You're going to have it. Total chaos, total godlessness. You will see things that, that we, can't even, we can't even imagine. Because as bad as you think some things get in this earth, you ain't seen nothing until we've been removed. In other words, the only thing stopping that is the church. That the only thing holding this planet down right now from total demonic takeover is the church. We're here. And we got Holy Ghost with us. And so the Bible declares, he says that time ain't come, it can't come until there's a falling away because there's something in the way right now that's stopping him. And plus, it ain't his time yet. So now, when will we know what will be the sign that it is the time for the lawless one to come to, to, to rise and to be worshipped and institute this last week of Daniel's prophecy, which is total abomination and desolation. What will set that in motion? It's called the catching away of the church. Which means when we are out of here, that starts Daniel's last week. It can't start until we're gone. Which means as long as we're here, he can't come. So quit talking about people the Antichrist. I don't care how much you don't like them. <laughs> they ain't the Antichrist. He can't come because Isaac Petrie's still here. And they found a good place to put your name in there. He can't come until we're gone. And when we're gone, Daniel's last week of seven years. That's why the tribulation period is going to be seven years. Because this is last week. Remember, a week is a seven-year period. This is last week. But it can't happen because he who is restraining. Who is that he who is restraining? We know it's Jesus, we, but, but it's the Holy Ghost. He is the representation of the Godhead. In the earth realm. Come on, I, I feel this pot boiling. See, see, I, I, I'm, I'm turning it up slowly. See, I'm turning the heat up slowly. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he's here. When Jesus stepped on the cloud, went to the right hand and sat down, the Holy Ghost got up and came down into the earth realm and says, I am here as the representative of the Godhead in the earth. And I am here to take those that have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus into the completion of your assignment. What is that completion? To have church? No. It is to bring the kingdom of heaven to this earth. It is to make sure that Satan can't get a foothold before his time. Your assignment here is redemption, reconciliation, healing, deliverance, miracles, signs, wonders, revelation, demonstration, dominion, authority. Casting out devils, pulling down principalities and powers. The assignment is to control the earth because God gave us a window. What is that window reserved for? To get as many people into the kingdom before the catching away of the church. That gap is for us to go to work and hit the harvest fields yes. and make sure that as the late great Reinhard Bunke used to say, we have heaven full and hell empty. It, it is 
has to be the assignment to make sure that Satan does not get to kill, steal, and destroy while a church is here with authority to deal with him. We have been sent to carry on the message and ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Touch yourself and say, I'm on assignment. What is that assignment? To do the works of Jesus. That's why we're here. To do the works of Jesus. That's why we're here. That's that gap that God has given between Daniel's 69th and 70th week. It's the age of redemption. Whew. It's the age where the blood can be applied. It's the age where you see people born again out of darkness into the marvelous light. You say, Pastor, do you believe people will be born again in the tribulation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. But that ain't the way to do it. <laughs> I'm just telling you, that's, that's when you're going to get saved and go to heaven quick. The Bible declares... And here is where I want to get the church to wake up and see. If you can put up for me on the screens, 2 Thessalonians, chapter number 2, verse number 6 and 7 again. 2 Thessalonians, chapter number 2, 6. So he says, and now you know what is restraining and stay right there for me, that he may be revealed in his own time. So the Holy Spirit is here, so Satan can't bring his anointed. All the Antichrist is is Satan's Messiah for the earth. Satan is twisted, and he's... He's a plagiarist. All, all, all he do is... is, 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 is exactly right. <laughs> I don't even want to talk about him. <laughs> he, he's, trying to bring, he's trying to bring in the power, but he can't do it because the Holy Ghost is in the earth. And the Holy Ghost is working through the church in the earth. And he knows he has to tiptoe around us. Oh, God. Put your hand on your head. I know you don't believe this, but when you get up in the morning, that's what Satan does around you. I'm going to go over here and try this with them. When you wake up in the morning, he tiptoes around you. <laughs> I know we don't believe that because we preached him so big. And we made him something to be so feared that we got half the church afraid of the enemy. When the Bible says if you resist him, he'll run from you. Why? Because like the devil said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, he knows those who have authority. We just don't know it. I know the story when Brother, Brother Hagin say, <laughs> one lady got up and prophet, uh, you know, they had testimony service in church all the time back, back when they had church back in the day. And, and say, she got up in testimony and said, and said, and said Lord, the, the, the devil has been on, on my trail. Bless his holy name. <laughs> we have taught the enemy like he chasing us. Can you see him chasing Jesus? Well, how is he chasing you? He chasing you cause you running. We 
are in authority down here. I said we are in authority down here. Look, you might as well fight. I'm trying to tell you, if you don't quit running for Goliath, I'm trying to tell you, he's just going to keep coming out there talking, and you're going to keep looking at him talking about, boy, I tell you, ain't nothing we can do with that. And it just took a little boy bringing a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Said, what? <laughs> Y'all sitting here letting him talk like that? What's up? What's up? What's up? What? What? Church of Jesus Christ, tonight we put the devil on notice that the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. No more backing up, no more backing in, no more giving up, no more giving in, no more talking doubt and fear and unbelief. You are in authority, and it is time you start to act like it. Yeah. I'm going to pick a fight tonight. I'm going to tell you going to fight before it's over. So now watch this. In this gap is the church age. The restrainer is in the way so that the Antichrist can't come. But now read the next verse, verse number seven. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until it's taken out of the way. Wow. Let me give you the revelation of that verse. It means that Satan has a time. The Antichrist has a time. The tribulation period has a time. That time can't begin until the catching away of the church. But do you think, now this is the Petri version of the Bible, but do you think Satan gonna wait till it's his time? No. Of course not. The mystery of iniquity is already at work. And while we're waiting on the man, the spirit is already at work in the earth. And it is contending with the church. Now let me bring you all the way up to 2020. Because what you see going on in the earth realm right now, it's that spirit of iniquity. Now, we've always had pandemics. We've always had earthquakes. We've always had these things. This, 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 this is nothing new. It's cyclical. They, they come because that's what the devil does. He goes in seasons and comes back. He goes in seasons and comes back. He goes in seasons and comes back. The only problem is, is he comes back when there is a more opportune time. That's right. And the difference between pandemics and these things that we're seeing in the earth, the difference is the response of the church. Why? Because we've been lulled to sleep by this spirit that's been working in the church from the beginning, but it has gotten its ground in this new cute fashion of church folks. And it's gotten its roots in the ground now, in the earth culture. I told you I came to fight though, so don't look at me like that. If you look at me like that, you just gonna make me worse. <laughs> it's gotten its roots in. It's gotten its roots into a church that's no longer restraining. When it did it back in the day, the church would rise up. They'd call a prayer meeting. They'd call some fasting and prayer. They'd start slinging blood everywhere. They'd start speaking the word. They'd start claiming faith. There were too many healing evangelists, too much word, too much word of faith, too, too much confession, too much saints that knew how to pray and stand in their authority. There was too much of it. So these things couldn't get the foothold that they wanted to get into the earth of destruction. But now Satan unleashed this thing and it got a grip on the world. Man, when that happened, an alarm should have went off into every believer on this earth. How can Satan shut down the whole planet with us on it? And it's because we're treating this thing like we're some type of scientist. 
I mean, some of you want to know more about the virus than Fauci. <laughs> the only thing you need to know about it is that it came from the pit of hell. Y'all yeah, don't hear what I'm saying. The only thing you need to know about it is that you need to get your mouth on it and start cursing it and cursing it and commanding it to get off this planet while the church is on it. This is demonic. We're dealing with demons and principalities and powers. We're dealing with wickedness. We're dealing with this mystery, this hidden way of how Satan is getting all this into the earth realm. And Jesus told us, I'm, I'm almost done. Jesus told us, he says, now I want y'all to be on the lookout. I'm going to pick back up on this tomorrow morning and then tomorrow night we'll, we'll, we'll dive into some dynamics of warfare. But Jesus said, he says, you want to look at this. Because they say, how are we going to know when the end of this age is coming? Jesus said, okay. Here's what you're going to have. You're going to have these wars and rumors of wars. You're going to have all these race fighting ethnic group against ethnic groups and all of these kinds of things. It ain't just black and white. It's all over the earth. <laughs> people be like, oh man. <laughs> I mean, I mean it's, it's seeing everywhere. Seeing everywhere. It ain't got no color. Sin is everywhere. This stuff is happening all over the earth. He says it's going to be happening. It's going to be happening. He says, but the end ain't yet. In other words, he said, all oh, that's going to be happening. And I think because Jesus said it was going to be happening, we think that Jesus is going to cause it to happen. Like I had people to say like this virus this, that's wiping out and wiping through the planet like God had something to do with that. God doesn't give viruses. He ain't got none. The devil did this. These are the schemes of the enemy. This is the mystery of iniquity because he knew that he could attack the church and the body of Christ and we had gotten to a point of weakness. Yes. Well, we would no longer fight these things. And then on the midst of it, you see all of the other things that are ramifications of it. What does that tell you? Satan is trying to sneak in our time. But I got good news for him tonight. I picked a fight with him in Texarkana, and I came to make some people in Virginia pick a fight with him. Your past has already been fighting, but it's time for all of y'all to start fighting. Devil ain't doing this. You ain't doing this with us here. This is not your age. This is the church age. This age belongs to us. This is the age of the blood bought and the blood washed. This is the age of the sons and daughters of the Most High God. And so Jesus said, watch all that, but, but, it's, but it's not the end. He says, keep watching, keep watching, keep watching all of that because those things are going to be coming on the earth. Why? Because Satan is going to keep testing the church. Might as well tell the truth about it. You have been born again, some of you, for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. And has it stopped Satan one time from trying to take from you everything you were born into? Healed. But it don't mean he ain't coming to try to steal it. Delivered, but it doesn't mean he ain't coming to try to steal it. Why? Because you better understand your adversary has picked a fight with you. He has been picking a fight with you, and this time he done jumped on the whole church. And if we don't wake up and understand that you're going to have to fight whether you want to or not, you are in a position now on this earth where you can't be silent. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. You're in position on the earth right now where you can't be still. You have got to stand your ground. You have got to push back. 
against the enemy. You see, I keep wanting to come after you, but that's tomorrow. Tonight, that's tomorrow night. I'm trying to give you the big picture tonight, but tomorrow night I'm coming after you. I'm gonna make you fight. I'm gonna make you fight. I'm gonna make you fight. But this is what he's trying to do in the earth realm. That spirit, Paul says, already at work. It was working in his day, and it's working in this day. And it's been working and working, trying to find a generation that will let it into the earth without restraint. Can I ask you something? If the salt has lost its savor, it is then good for nothing than to be thrown out and trampled under the foot by men. That's what the devil is trying to do to the church. He's trying to just move us right on to the side. Y'all don't need nothing. Y'all ain't essential. Y'all can't do this. Y'all can't do that. And it's time for a church to stand and say, now wait a minute. Oh, yes, we can. <laughs> and yes, we will. But in order to do that, you got to have a church. You got to have a church to stand up. But we've been so under this, this deception of the spirit of Antichrist. It's been so working in the church where we've moved the restrainer. Watch this. Almost out to church. You say, what are you saying, Pastor? <laughs> Remember, the real restrainer is the Holy Ghost. And we've moved him almost out of the church. This is why we got to get you in by 10 and out by 1030. We've been on this slippery slope. Of, oh, I ain't got to come to church. I don't need all that. I can just stay at home and watch it. And, and we've been on this slippery slope where people won't say nothing. You can't get them to stand for anything. You can't get them to have nothing spirit-led, spirit-driven. All oh, that age has come. You know, now we've got, you know, tight shirts and skinny jeans now. You know, and, and, we, don't, and we don't need all that, you know, because we're smart. We're articulate now. Don't ever take all that falling out and speaking in tongues and praying and all that. And Satan has been saying, yeah, that's the generation I want right there. Because when I I hit them they won't have no power to deal with me about but I got good news for you let me just shout it aloud the Holy Ghost coming back in his church and I'm talking signs wonders miracles healings prophecies tongues interpretations we got to have the Holy Ghost oh shout 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 Let me tell you something. Without the Holy Ghost, you can't restrain. This is why the enemy has to stay standing. This is why the enemy has tried to systematically move the Holy Spirit out. Move all of that out of the modern church. Brother Hagin prophesied years ago that if he didn't keep on trying to put this into the believers, that there would come a generation that would not know the move of the Spirit. Well, we're here. We're in it. We're in it right now. And it's the spirit of lawlessness. It is the deception of the enemy. And we're dealing with so much stuff in the earth realm. Because Satan... I like to say it like this, it's disrespecting us. He know it ain't his time. It's in the tribulation period where they burn down cities. They can't do that now. It's in the tribulation period where you've got people fighting and bickering and lawlessness and no mentality of sanity where you have men that can wake up in the morning and say I feel like a woman no you got to say this kind of stuff in this church age because see you see you're like oh pastor I tell you but see because back in the day you would know better but you're dealing with a church age now 
Well, you know, we must, you know, to be just a little more sensitive to the plights of people because now we've understood through our research and study that uh, some of these issues are psychological. Therefore, they must be dealt with by psychological means. So we cannot ostracize, uh, we cannot criticize anybody who deals with that lifestyle because, because the Bible says that God is love. And if God is love, then... We got so much mess going on in this globe right now, and it's all laid at the foot of the church. <laughs> Governments don't get rid of pandemics. Believers do. Did y'all hear what I said? said we the one that know about healing we the ones that serve Jehovah Rapha we the ones that know how to plead the blood let me tell you something right now let me tell you something I'm gonna tell everybody here listen to me you respect this virus but you do not fear it Amen. we don't fear nothing that comes out of the gates of hell I don't care what it is, but I want to catch it. If you catch it, you're going to get healed of it. But you show sure not going to beat it running. Are you listening to me? You're not going to beat it fearful. You're not going to defeat it like that. And you're sure not going to move it off the earth with a whole church who can't get together. Put our faith together. Stand our ground. And say, not in this age. You're going to have to come back when we go. <laughs> it's leaving right now. I said it's leaving right now. Every believer should never open your mouth about this thing that you don't talk about the blood, that you don't talk about the name, that you don't talk about the word, that you don't mention Jehovah Rapha. Don't glorify none of it. Speak the name, exalt the name, exalt him, lift him high, magnify him, glorify him. Talk about Psalms 91, quote it everywhere. Tell the devil it ain't working. And if the church got together, and let me tell you something, I'm just going to hit this and move on. If you are in the body of Christ, you don't have no racist problem. That's what worldly folk do. That's what people that don't have Jesus do. But that ain't in the church. People keep talking about their racism in church. No, it ain't. That's an oxymoron. How you going to be in the church and racist? Either you in the church or you racist. In this we know we have passed from death unto life in that we love the brethren. The only problem now is we call everything racist. Well, you got people walk around think, oh my God, I was a racist because you like pig feet. Not no. <laughs> We got to get rid of all this foolishness, church. We got a devil of fighting. He ain't coming to take sides. He's coming to take over. And it's going to take a unified church to deal with him. We don't even have time for that. I told our church, I ain't talking about none of that stuff. I ain't even got time to deal with that. I'm going to keep my eye right on the devil because this stuff is from principalities and powers. Yeah, I said it. I told y'all I came to start a fight. Church giving all this stuff attention. 
letting the world dictate to us what we're supposed to be doing and acting and talking like. And it ain't nothing but the spirit of strife. And this is the reason why we can't move nothing off the earth. Because everybody bickering. Ain't nothing but a big old dust fight. That's all it is. Just people, if you're going to be that carnal to put some pride in your dirt, I ain't even got no time to talk to you. I ain't even got time to even discuss it. I ain't even got time to even talk about it. Anybody going to be that carnal to think this means something? You might need to get saved. Come on now, church. We don't have time for this. That's the devil starting all this mess and causing all of this stuff. We can't do it. We can't have it. Got the devil to fight. We got stuff to happen now. Tomorrow night. And, and if Pastor, and if, and, and if I blooded somebody knows, you forgive me. <laughs> you did, if he told me to hit him, he told me, go ahead and hit you. <laughs> no, come on, I'm in the house where I know we together. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Listen, church, the big picture is that you see the spirits designed for that age in the tribulation starting to come on over into this one. That's what you're seeing. That's what you're seeing. That's why it's getting more wicked and twisted and dangerous and wicked and twisted because Satan is already trying to have a pre-trib on our watch. That's why he's trying to kill people early it's the tribulation period that people die for, for knowing Jesus. It's in the church age where you can't die. Oh. It's in this age where you rebuke death and say, oh, no, I ain't leaving here till I'm done. You say, now, Pastor Peter, how can you say that? You better say it. I say, you better say it. What if you don't? I won't be here to talk about it. I'm telling you right now, this is the age where you get healed. This is the age that everything that blood paid for, you get to walk in. But Satan is going to try to steal it. Whether it's the peace in your mind. So my, my assignment tonight is don't you let him have nothing. that does not belong to him in this age. The church is here. Come on, lift your hands up. Say this after me. Say, I'm the restrainer. I'm the restrainer. Say, the Holy Ghost in me. The Holy Ghost in me. Yeah, he's here to help me restrain sickness and disease. He's here to help me restrain darkness. He's here to help me restrain Real quick, uh, how, how many years does this make for, for him uh, recovering yeah, uh, from that? Nine. nine years. I remember nine years ago. Yeah, I remember that. I remember being here preaching nine years. I remember going over there to the hospital, seeing him. Nine years. Could have been easy to say, you know what, I've, I've done well. You know, I've done some amazing things in the kingdom. You know, but no, he laid dead in faith, saying, I ain't going nowhere because I ain't done. And in the middle of it, he said, I never lost my peace. I knew the Lord was going to bring me out. And nine years later, why? Because he got to raise up some giant killers. He got to raise up. Some people are faith. Come on, put your hand on yourself. Say, Lord, I'm ready to fight. 
the good fight of faith. We will finish the redemptive assignment. Now, I want you to really grab this in your spirit because this is the revelation I want you to go home with. In this age, you are in authority. I don't care what happens in this age. Wars, earthquakes, hurricanes, pandemics, sickness, disease. If it is in this age, you got authority over it. Ayah, let that get way down in you. Greater is he that is in you. You've been born of divine DNA. You've been sent the Holy Spirit to walk you through this age. Don't let Satan steal one day from you. Don't let him steal one year from you. This year is still going to end up greater than anything you can ever imagine. But you're going to have to stand for it. The mystery of iniquity is at work. Satan is here. To, tomorrow night you're going to learn that we're wrestling against his schemes and strategies. He's coming to steal everything that should be yours in this age. And you got to fight for it. Oh, not to get it, to keep it. You got to fight because the thief is coming to try to steal it. And Father, we plant our foot tonight. And we declare in the name of Jesus, this virus has come to an end. The strife in this nation has come to an end. The will of God for this nation will be done. For every city, for every family, we will not allow you to steal, kill, and destroy. You have a time and this ain't it. This is our time. And we stake our claim in the blood. Woo! Now fight, church. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight with the sword of the spirit. Fight with your words. Fight with your mouth. Fight with your praise. Fight with the spirit of God. And you shall conquer and recover all. Shout if you believe it. Yeah. Woo. Hallelujah. 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 I decree you are healed in your body. I decree you are healed in your body. I decree you are healed. You are healed. You are healed in your body. I decree healing, deliverance, whatever you need in the age that God has given to you. Take it right now. Take it right now. Take it right now. In the name of Jesus, don't back up. Take it right now. This is the last thing I'm going to do tonight. Get your hand out there. Open it up just like this. Now, this is just a prophetic symbol because this is where you're going to live the rest of your life. And I want you to reach out and grab it and just take it. That's the way you're going to live. Give me my healing, God. Give me my joy. Give me my deliverance. Give me my money. And by the way, give me my son and my daughter. Give me back my family. Take it. Hallelujah. Oh, shout somebody. I said take it. No more backing up. No more. You taking your last step back. 
straight ahead from here on out. I got to go, y'all. I've been kept you here till 10, 15. First time I've been out the house, I told you this was dangerous. But it's 920. I got to let you go so you can come back tomorrow. <laughs> come on, Pastor. Shout, take it. Take it.